Wolf, thank you very much. We'll get to a special edition of Talk Back Live in just a moment. First, we want to bring our viewers the latest developments today, which took place in private meetings and in television appearances, many of which you might have seen right here on CNN. Members of the Bush administration have been preparing the country today for a long and difficult war against terrorism. In other developments this hour, suspected terrorist Osama bin Laden has issued a statement. It came a short while ago. Once again, he says he did not plan Tuesday's attacks on the World Trade Center and the Pentagon. Meanwhile, in New York, new aerial pictures of the ruins of the World Trade Center drive home the enormity of the destruction that took place there. Mayor Rudy Giuliani saying the rescue operation will continue until all hope is gone. More than 5,000 people are reported missing. There is a new sign that Pakistan is following through with its pledge to cooperate with the war on terror. CNN has learned that the Pakistani government is sending a high-level delega delegation to Afghanistan tomorrow to demand the handover of suspected terrorist Osama bin Laden. Our Mike Chinoy is in the Pakistani capital of Islamabad. Mike, what's the latest you can tell us about this extraordinary trip and the demands of the Pakistani government? Darren, Pakistani President General Pervez Musharraf made clear today that his government does intend to fully back the United States in its drive to wipe out terrorism. And if that means targeting Osama bin Laden in Afghanistan, Pakistan will support the U.S. on that front. Before the guns start firing, General Musharraf said that he was going to send a high-level delegation to the southern Afghan city of Kandahar to meet with officials of the ruling Taliban and press them to turn over Osama bin Laden to the United States and thereby avoid a devastating American attack. The message Musharraf told local journalists would be that unless Osama bin Laden was turned over, there was no way for Afghanistan to avoid such an attack. Musharraf indicated that Pakistan would be ready to provide logistical support, access for uh, U.S. forces to Pakistan's uh, airspace to share intelligence. He did rule out the use of Pakistani ground troops in any assault on Afghanistan, but he is making it very clear uh, that Pakistan does intend to stand with the United States as this crisis develops uh, in the coming days and weeks. Darren? Mike, that's a demand that will be delivered by the general, but Pakistan is hardly a united country when it comes to this issue and especially supporting the United States. That's correct. I spent most of this past day uh, in the city of Lahore, where a meeting was held of over 100 leaders and senior officials from some of the Islamic fundamentalist parties and groups and also some of the opposition political parties. Uh, the message from that meeting was that there was strong opposition uh, to uh, General uh, Musharraf uh, allying himself in this way with the United States. Uh, and the call that came out from that meeting was that he should not allow the U.S. forces to make use of uh, Pakistani territory or airspace to launch an assault on Afghanistan. Some of the more extreme Islamic fundamentalists there told me that they would consider any U.S. attack on Afghanistan an attack on Pakistan and predicted turmoil in the streets here if the U.S. went ahead. The Pakistani leader has a problem. He seized power in a coup d'etat two years ago. There are some questions about his legitimacy. The major political parties here are excluded from the government. And there is a lot of criticism that one hears on the streets that so far the Pakistani leader has not made a case to the people of Pakistan as to why he's doing this. This is an overwhelmingly Islamic country. Many of its people are very poor. There are a lot of supporters of fundamentalist Islamic groups, and to many uh, people along of those of uh, and that type, uh, Osama bin Laden is seen as something uh, of an Islamic hero rather than a terrorist. He has a lot of support. Uh, for example, we spoke to almost 50 people in one neighborhood in Lahore, asking them what they would do if the U.S. attacked Afghanistan. All of them said they would support Afghanistan. Many of them voiced support for Osama bin Laden. So it's a real dilemma for General Musharraf. Darren? Tomorrow will indeed be a telling day. Mike Chinoy in Islamabad, thank you very much. Want to come back here to the United States now. New numbers to show you. A new poll suggesting that Americans are rallying behind the newly declared war on terrorism. It's a CNN USA Today Gallup poll. 88% say they support U.S. military action to retaliate for Tuesday's attacks. Only 8% oppose striking back. 
More than half of those questioned believe the U.S. should mount a long-term war to eliminate terrorism. 36 percent want a more focused response to punish the specific terrorist groups involved in the attacks. News today that focuses on Washington, D.C., a disturbing report that there actually was 12 minutes of warning for the military to do something about the hijacked planes, and yet 12 minutes apparently was not enough for the procedures in place and specifically the positioning of the planes that were needed in that attack. For more on that, let's go to the Pentagon and our Jamie McIntyre. Jamie, what can you tell us about 12 minutes not being enough to save thousands of lives? Well, you know, Darren, first of all, we have to say this is all second guessing and going looking back in retrospect. But in retrospect, as soon as that second plane hit the World Trade Center, it was obvious the United States was under terrorist attack. At, uh, that happened about 9.02 in the morning. At 9.25, the FAA uh, notified NORAD that another plane had been hijacked and was heading toward Washington. At that point, uh, um, Military jets were scrambled from Langley Air Force Base, about 130 miles uh, southeast of here. F-16 screamed toward Washington at supersonic speeds, breaking the sound barrier, covering that distance in about 14 minutes. But that was about, uh, they arrived about 10 minutes after the plane, the American Airlines flight, hit the Pentagon. It's pretty clear that the way the United States was positioned with the, the planes where they were, they were in no position to shoot down the plane, even if the president had given an authorization for that. Sources here at the Pentagon tell us that President Bush did not authorize the shoot down of planes, though, until after that plane hit the Pentagon. But here's probably uh, the bigger question. Twelve minutes uh, warning that a plane is heading toward Washington. The U.S. knows now it's under terrorist attack because two planes have hit those uh, towers in at the World Trade Center. Could an evacuation have been ordered of major government buildings, or for that matter, other buildings in Washington at that time. Well, officials here at the Pentagon say they weren't even told that the uh, plane was heading toward Washington. Uh, they had no knowledge of that, so, and there was no mechanism in place for ordering an evacuation. But again, this is all hindsight. Meanwhile, Defense Secretary Rumsfeld, again, uh, talking tough today, trying to lay the groundwork for what the uh, Defense Department is calling a very different kind of war that's going to be conducted against terrorism. It will take a broad, sustained uh, uh, effort that will, that will be, have to use our, our dip diplomatic, our political, our economic, our financial strength, as well as our military strength, and unquestionably uh, unconventional techniques. And uh, it will take time. It's not a matter of days or weeks. It's, it's years. It is, it, it's going to take the support of the American people, and I have every confidence it'll be there. Pentagon officials are telling me not to look for any imminent military action, that the U.S. will be looking for targets of opportunity to strike back at terrorists. And uh, as he said, as uh, everyone has been saying in the government today, not to necessarily think of this as a military war, but an intelligence war, a law enforcement war, a war on all fronts. Darren? All right, Jamie, we started on, on a disturbing front, so I want to take a turn and talk about something that might be very encouraging to a lot of Americans out there, and that is the news on the USS Cole that was hit with that devastating attack almost a year ago. I hear it's going back into service. It is. The repairs have been completed, and uh, on Friday, Friday morning, uh, the ship was actually put back into the water after the repairs uh, essentially had been completed. A very little fanfare made uh, down at the uh, Ingalls shipyard in Pascagoula, Mississippi, as it basically was secretly slipped back into the water and towed a little bit out to sea. They still haven't started up the engines. It hasn't rejoined the fleet, uh, but it will be after suffering uh, that nearly uh, $250 million worth of damage in the terrorist attack in the port of Aden. Darren? Jamie McIntyre at the Pentagon. Jamie, thank you very much. We're going to head north from there and, and check in with my colleague Bill Hemmer at Ground Zero in Lower Manhattan. As we do that, I want to show you some pictures we received into CNN today. Some new pictures from the air. It's a big picture look at the devastation. It's from a Coast Guard helicopter that flew over the area this morning. CNN had a photographer on board. You'll be able to see plenty more of these pictures and these images in the hours ahead. Very close to the site where we're looking overhead, we go down to the ground and find Bill Hemmer, street level in the financial district. Bill. Yeah, Darren, thank you. It's uh, those aerial pictures we've been waiting for some time to get a better perspective from above ground. 
Here on the ground, though, the devastation continues, and so too does the emotion. A short time ago, New York's Governor George Pataki came out, talked with reporters briefly, and uh, it was another emotional press conference held here on the streets of Manhattan. We have to just honor them as heroes, thank them for their love of the people of New York, and pray that their families will be strong and make sure their families know they're part of us now and we'll always be there standing with them. And Governor, we stand together. You've been great. Thank you, Governor. We share those losses, but we'll get through this. God bless Neil. God bless Fred. God bless all. Port Authority and the United States of America. Not every day the governor of a large state here in the United States breaks down publicly like that, but clearly the emotion runs high. One of the luckier people in all of New York City, all the country for that matter, Dave Lim, Port Authority Police Department, a member of the K-9 unit with us now live here in Manhattan. You are lucky because you were in the North Tower on that day. When it came crashing down, you were trapped inside. What happened? Well, as far as I went up to help people in the building, and I got up as far as the 44th floor in building number one. And we got some people down, and then the second plane hit the other tower, knocking us off our feet. But we got together, we proceeded to the staircase, and we got that all the way down to the uh, fourth floor when the building collapsed upon us. Us being myself and uh, six members of Ladder Company 6 and a civilian named uh, Josephine Harris. Well, Dave, tell me something. When it came down, what do you remember seeing? What do you remember feeling and hearing? Well, seeing, there wasn't much. We were covering up the, the civilian, Josephine Harris. We were just on the ground uh, hearing. It sounded like a, a rushing locomotive or an avalanche coming at us. As, and feeling, it was the feeling that I was going to die. You know, that's the only thing I could think of at the time. And, and it went from I was going to die to no, I'm going to live and go home and see my family. Wow. You were trapped for how long? We were trapped for approximately four to five hours. What did you do during that time before you were rescued? Well, we radioed for help uh, with using our walkie-talkies, the fire department and myself. And we, uh, we would try to keep each other's spirits up, trying to get through on our cell phones to our families. And Did you uh, make a connection? We finally did. Yes, wow. To my, I, got, I got through to my wife. Mm -hmm. And I spoke to her. It was, a, it was a personal conversation, of course. But then I told her that I would have to give the phone up to the other firemen. And, and it was only right that they had to call their families just in case, of course. You're here today. I'm here today. And I'm, I'm here to tell everybody, especially the rescuers, that I know that they haven't found anybody in a while and that you can survive something like this. And I'm living proof of that. If that helps you yeah. to keep going, then I've done my job today. That is a wonderful, wonderful message. Your partner, though, in the K-9 unit has not been found That's just correct. Yet. I had to leave Cirrus, my partner. He's the yellow lab down on the B-1 level where our office is before I went to do the rescue. The last thing I said to him was that I'll be back soon. I hope to God he's still waiting for me. Wow. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, sir. Best of luck with you. Thank and you. our thoughts are with you, OK? Dave Lim, Port Authority Police Department here in Lower Manhattan. The numbers, again, were up earlier today, Darren, 5,097. Thank you, Dave. 5,097 still missing in the rubble behind us here in Southern Manhattan. Darren, back to you. Bill, devastating numbers and stories that still bring tears to all of our eyes. Thank you very much, Bill Hemmer in Manhattan. There is a sign, though, that New Yorkers are getting back to work, trying to put their lives back together. The New York Stock Exchange and NASDAQ plan to reopen for business tomorrow, 9.30 a.m. Eastern Time. You'll see that live here on CNN. The phone lines and computers were checked out yesterday, and the Stock Exchange chairman, Richard Grasso, says all systems are go. Both markets have been on hold since Tuesday. A couple notes on that. As the uh, opening bell rings, there will be two minutes of silence on the floor. Also, they'll sing God Bless America. And the opening bell, usually rung by politicians or celebrities, will be rung by members of the rescue teams who have been working so diligently since last Tuesday. We're going to stand by here. We're waiting for President Bush to return from Camp David to the White House. You'll see that live here on CNN. I'll stand by. Meanwhile, we're going to head to Bobby Batista and a special edition of Talk Back Live, America Speaks Out. Bobby. Darren, thank you very much, and thanks to all these wonderful people for coming down on their Sunday afternoon for this special edition of Talk Back Live, America Speaks Out.
Uh, we will be here with our uh, live audience for the next couple of hours. This is your chance to share your thoughts and your feelings as President Bush declares, we are at war. Later this hour, we will talk to religious leaders about faith and about the Islamic faith in particular. And throughout the afternoon, you will have a chance to talk with our reporters and experts about the investigation, the reaction, and the war on terrorism. But first, once again, I would like to take a little bit of a temperature of what's going on in our audience today. So let me get a feel for how you feel about the president saying that we are at war. Jeff, do you agree with that statement? And what do you think we should do? I think we are at war. I think we should go in now and take care of take care of the terrorism, take care of Islam bin Laden, because the, they, they're talking about that this is a holy war. They're calling it a holy war. They're going in, they're saying that, um, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're shielding the people, uh, they're, they're shielding their leaders behind innocent people. Um, I have to agree with what Zell Miller said from here in Georgia. We should bomb them all to hell because they, did, they thought our people were expendable. If, if we bomb their people, there's innocent lives lost. So be it. They didn't care about our people. And another thing is we're getting too much. We're starting to get into semantics. We're starting to say we're starting to sugarcoat things. You know, I want people to look at the hard realities. We were attacked on our shores. Stephen, we keep hearing the word they a lot. Do you feel like you know who you're fighting? I think we're fighting exactly who the president said we're going against, going to war against. We're going, we're fighting terrorists. The president didn't say we we're at war with Osama bin Laden. He didn't say we we're at war with Islam. He said we're at war with terrorism. That's who we're fighting. No matter where you are in the world, I agree with the president and I support him. You can run, but you cannot hide. And across the room over here. This is Hannah. Hannah, go ahead. I do agree that we are at war with terrorism. Again, I agree that this was an attack on humanity, but that we have to be conscious of the collateral damage in our counterattack, that we have to be conscious and, and aware of the fact that we still retain our humanity, and it's important that we display that in our counterattack, that we be strategic and that we do not waste millions or thousands of innocent lives to recognize that we are dealing with people and this is a war against terrorism, not a war against a religious group, not a war against an ethnic people, a war against terrorism and specific terrorists at that. Let me take a phone call. Nancy in Oregon. Go ahead, Nancy. Okay, it's Oklahoma, but that's fine. Oh, Oklahoma, fine. sorry. Uh, I want to say that I'm a Vietnam era veteran and I think that this attitude of that we're too good or we're too moral to, to get down and do what needs to be done uh, I think we need to resolve ourselves that we need to get down, get dirty, get after them. And the difference between us and them is that we'll clean ourselves up afterwards. And one more from the audience here. Elliot? Well, I feel at this point it's necessary to make a statement to the world that we will not condone countries harboring terrorists. And Afghanistan, we've asked them before to get rid of bin Laden and to take action, and now we've finally given him, or Pakistan has given him an ultimatum. And if he does not comply, it'll be necessary to take action against Afghanistan and then from there to get bin Laden. Here to give us some idea now of what's on the minds of uh, people in their areas, in their hometowns, Al Rantel, host of the Al Rantel Show on KABC Radio in Los Angeles, and Victoria Jones, a radio talk show host on WMAL in Washington. Is this pretty much mirroring, uh, Al, what you're hearing from your listeners? Yeah, very much. It's, it's amazing how the nation is speaking so much with one voice, Bobby. Uh, it's, it's, the unity is pretty amazing to see. Uh, differences have been put aside. Uh, the controversy under which uh, President Bush became president seems to have not had an impact on how people are reacting to this. And I, I think what it shows is that the enemies of the United States always underestimate the American people. It never fails. Uh, they really believe that they can destroy America, and, and they don't understand that America is an idea and uh, that, that you can't destroy ideas. You only unify people when you do what these, uh, what these awful individuals thought they could do. Victoria, we only knew exactly who that enemy was. Yeah, we don't know exactly who it is. We've got an idea about who it is, and we've got an idea about who's harboring him or them. We don't really know, and we're hoping that our government does know and that they'll take the appropriate action at the right time. It's very difficult to fight a war against people who you cannot see, except you just see this one face again and again and again of Osama bin Laden. Um, and it'll be tragic, and it may be necessary if we have to bomb Afghanistan, because the people of Afghanistan did not put the Taliban in power. They are being oppressed by the 
the Taliban, and some of them have actually said they would rather die by American bombs than continue to live in the conditions they're living in now. So we're, we're talking about a really terrible situation and some very difficult choices. But I would agree with Al that definitely Americans are united. They are grieving. They are sad. They are angry. And they continue to be compassionate. And these are all the qualities that will ensure victory for us and for our allies. Let me take a quick look at the uh, latest CNN USA Today Gallup poll. Um, right now, there is a lot of support among Americans for military action. Uh, the newest poll that we've done shows 88% of the country favors retaliating. People uh, appear to be in this for the long haul, meaning that they will support it for years. And um, if we can get to the next, uh, there we go, long-term war to eliminate terrorism, 52% are supporting that, 36% uh, for punish those responsible for the attacks. And they are also prepared to make sacrifices. It would appear 80% are saying that they would support the use of ground troops, and that support is there even if there are casualties. Let me go to the audience on this. Um, Pat, you're a veteran? Yes, sir. Which war? Uh, both uh, Vietnam and World War II. Mm -hmm. Uh, my main concern is that this is a different kind of war. I think the statement made that we are at war is very appropriate. The enemy that we're fighting isn't a battalion, isn't Russia, isn't a designated country per se. I'm praying that what the president does, that he's first of all gets everything in order, take his time, be very selective as to what we're going to do, do not misuse our troops. We've had some bad experiences in the past. And that we, what we do, in the, we not only have to satisfy ourselves, we have to satisfy the people of the world. Mm -hmm. That we're just not going out and just trying to be the cowboy. Let me, uh, let me run a soundbite that came earlier today uh, from uh, Secretary of State Colin Powell on this very thing, on the, on the kind of war that we will be fighting. Let's run that. And nobody should think this is going to be, we go in and it's over in two days and we're out. This is going to change the way we do business. It's going to change the way we go about our daily life here in the United States. It's going to require a greater emphasis on homeland defense so we can defend ourselves against those who not. We'll come back to that soundbite in just a moment. We have to interrupt our show to take you back to the news desk and Darren Kagan now. Darren? Bobby, I want to show you live pictures now. We're getting in from the White House, a landing of Marine One on board President Bush. He's returning from Camp David, where he's been over the weekend meeting with his national security advisors. We expect when the helicopter lands and the president gets out, he is going to make some comments, and we'll bring those to you live here on CNN. Meanwhile, we'll split the screen, keep the picture on the president and the White House, and continue to listen to our viewers. Bobby? All right, Darren, we'll get back to you as soon as we hear something from the president. Um, can we re-rack that soundbite from the uh, Secretary of State there real quick and run that again on what sort of war we are fighting this time around. And nobody should think this is going to be, we go in and it's over in two days and we're out. This is going to change the way we do business. It's going to change the way we go about our daily life here in the United States. It's going to require a greater emphasis on homeland defense so we can defend ourselves against those who, notwithstanding our best efforts overseas, are still trying to get in uh, to the country to hurt us. Al, Victoria, reaction? Well, what kind I'll tell of war you, well, are we fighting exactly? It's certainly well, not a conventional one. Well, it's going to be a completely he... new war, a war that we've never fought before, a war that we're fighting against a different kind of enemy. Um, it is a war of ideas as well as of troops. We have an idea and they have an idea. And that's one of the difficulties of this war. Also, the sustainability of it is going to be difficult for us, but we can rise to it. We're so used to instant response to everything that for us to sustain this for several years is going to be challenging. We can do that, but that's something I'm already starting to hear from our audience as to how long are we prepared to keep going at this. But I think are that we, we are. We also have to evaluate some of the ways we do business here in the United States, too. This will be as much an internal look as it will be what we do externally. For example, you know, these people were running around loose in this country, Bobby. Uh, they were doing all kinds of things, going to flight school in Florida and elsewhere. And uh, we have to decide, who are we going to let into America? Are we going to be able to keep track of people who come here illegally and not have them come at all? and know when people exit that they're supposed to exit. And if they don't exit the country, what exactly are they doing here? Particularly when they're from very suspect parts of the world oftentimes. So there are ways that we do business in America 
that have not really been up to the level of a superpower to protect our security. We're going to have to examine all of those things as much as we do anything militarily. Sarah, go ahead. And that we should remember first and foremost is that bin Laden is a criminal. He has, he has committed a crime against the whole world, and he is he's like a cancer on, on, on the, the body of, of the world. And so we must concentrate on him and not try to kill the whole body. Sarah, let me interrupt you just a second. We're not, we're not ignoring the president here. We're having audio problems from the White House, so um, we will get you the president's remarks uh, as quickly as we can. Sarah, go ahead. I was basically saying that as far as retaliation goes, we have to be very careful not to attack the whole body when we're just trying to get the cancer. Well, this is the difficulty because the cancer is not just in one place. Um, if we kill Osama bin Laden, that's fine. Okay, we do that. But many more suicide bombers will arise in his state because that is the way that this particular war is being waged. We have to fight at a deeper level, a much more complex level than just taking out one person or one group or one cell. This is Let's, why it's going to take Victoria, so long. Victoria, I'm sorry. Let's go to the president now. We've restored audio. Well, evidently we have not. We'll keep working on that and <laughs> get back to the president. I'm sorry, Victoria. Go ahead. We're also starting to hear from some of our audience uh, the idea that we have to look at ourselves, not in the sense that we deserve this, but in the sense of how do other people look at us and how are we going to be perceived during this? We have great faith because of the compassion and love that our fellow Americans are showing each other in times of need. I also have faith in our military, and we have got a job to do, just like the farmers and ranchers and business owners and factory workers have a job to do, my administration has a job to do, and we're going to do it. We will call together freedom-loving people to fight terrorism. So on this day, of, uh, on the Lord's Day, I uh, say to my fellow Americans, thank you for your prayers, thank you for your compassion, thank you for your love for one another. And tomorrow when you get back to work, work hard like you always have. But we've been warned. We've been warned there are evil people in this world. We've been warned so vividly. And we'll be alert. Your government is alert. Governors and mayors are alert that evil folks still lurk out there. As I said yesterday, people have declared war on America, and they have made a terrible mistake because this is a fabulous country. Our economy will come back. We'll still be the best farmers and ranchers in the world. We're still the most innovative entrepreneurs in the world. On this day of faith, I've, got, I've never had more faith in America than I have right now. Mr. President, are you worried this crisis might send us into a recession? Uh, David, I understand that uh, there are some businesses that hurt as a result of uh, uh, this crisis. Obviously, New York City hurts. Congress acted quickly. We worked together, the White House and the Congress, to pass a significant supplemental. A lot of that money was dedicated to New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut, as it should be. People will be amazed at how quickly we rebuild New York. How quickly, people, how quickly people come together uh, to, uh, to uh, really wipe away the rubble and show the world that we're still the strongest nation in the world. But I have great faith in the resiliency of the economy, and uh, no question about it, this incident uh, affected our economy, but the market's open tomorrow, people go back to work, and we'll show the world. Yeah. Mr. President, do you believe Osama bin Laden's denial that he had anything to do with this? No question. He is the prime suspect. No question about that. Mr. President, can you describe your conversation with the President of Pakistan and the specific promises he made to you? And in addition to that, do you see other promises similar to that Saudi Arabia to help out other countries? John, I will, um, I, 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 obviously I made a call to the leader of Pakistan. We had a very good, open conversation with him. And there is no question that he wants to cooperate with the United States. I'm not at liberty to detail specifically what we have asked him to do. In the course of this 
conduct of this uh, war against terrorism. I'll be asked a lot, and members of my administration will be asked a lot of questions about our strategies and tactics. And uh, in order to protect the lives of uh, people that will be involved in the different operations, I'm not at liberty to talk about it, and I won't talk about it. But I can tell you that the uh, response from Pakistan, Prime Minister Biden,